Vice uh, host of the Dairy Black Belt Nutrition Podcast. My guest today is Dr. Chan He Lee, an associate professor at The Ohio State University up at Worcester. Uh, I worked with Chan for the last few years of my career. He was a great colleague. Uh, he has a very active program in applied dairy nutrition. And today what we're going to talk about is an experiment his group did evaluating dry distiller grains and DCAD treatments. Uh, Dr. Lee, welcome to the Black Belt. Thank you very much. I'm uh, Chan Hill Lee. Um, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Okay. On, on this paper you did, first of all, why, why did you basically do this? What was your hypothesis? We had uh, uh, two hypotheses. I'm uh, always interested in uh, using, utilizing a byproduct for uh, dairy cows to reduce the feed cost. So first of all, I like to use it a uh, high amount uh, for dairy cows to reduce the feed cost uh, if that doesn't affect the production um, income over feed cost is probably goes up. Uh, other uh, hypothesis is that uh, the sterile grain include, contains uh, sulfur and uh, we uh, also um, and also there is a different properties of protein uh, compared to soybean meal. So if you feed the sterile grain compared to soybean meal, uh, in our previous experiment, we observed the decreased ammonia emission from manure. So I like to use to feed the high amount of the sterile grain to uh, reduce the feed cost and also reduced ammonia emission from manure. What was the, for this experiment, for this specific experiment, what were, what was your treatments? So first uh, treatment was control, which is the soybean meal based diet. Uh, it's the pretty typical. Uh, and the second, uh, exper second treatment was the diet uh, containing distilled grain, uh, replacing soybean meal and fat supplement. Uh, and third treatment, was the uh, same second diet, uh, so the dessert grain diet containing uh, supplemental yeast. And fourth treatment was the same dessert grain diet, but the decad was increased. So uh, because uh, a high sulfur concentration in dessert grain, the diet decad a decad is decreased if you increase the amount of dissolved grain in the ration. Uh, so uh, that uh, decrease the decad may uh, uh, the negatively affect the milk fat and milk yield and dry matter intake. We increase the decad with uh, uh, sodium and potassium. And do, do you remember when, when you put in the 20% distillers, what what came out? You know, because something, something goes in, something has to go out. So was it just corn and Soy came out, or did you alter uh, other things? One hundred percent of soybean meal, uh, and then uh, the fat supplement, and then a little bit of soy holes, because so the, uh, uh, this soy grain contains NDF. Um, soy hole was removed, so basically soy byproduct was replaced uh, with this soy grain. Okay, and the forage was corn silage, and it was constant was the across the diets. Um, what what did you find? What, what, what result? Let's start with production. What did you find? So um, for the distilled grain diet, uh, we observed uh, what we expected, uh, which is uh, decreased the digestibility of nutrient. Uh, I think decreased the milk fat. Milk fat is the main negative with production uh, uh, if the, the response. So those are the what we observed. And yeast treatment, uh, we included the yeast uh, treatment because sometimes yeast increase the rumen fermentation and hopefully increase the nutrient digestibility in the rumen uh, because uh, the stress grain uh, diet always has lower digestibility compared to soybean meal based diet. But it didn't work. We didn't see any improvement of nutrient digestibility with the yeast supplementation. However, when we increase the decad of the distilled grain diet, we increase. We were able to alleviate alleviate uh, the milk fat, uh, low milk fat, uh, of the response. So statistically, we didn't see any difference in milk fat yield between control and distilled grain diet, 
with the de- increased the decal. So the the milk fat, the lower milk fat that we we often see with these really high distiller diets, at least partially is caused by the the the, the low decat of the diet, the high sulfur in these exactly. things, at least partially. It's it's not just the unsaturated fat in the in the distillers. Yeah, there are uh, I think the three factors: unsaturated fatty acid, and then decat, and uh, reduce the nutrient digestibility. And in the in the you it, I can't remember, but it was seven or eight units difference in fiber digestion. It was substantial between the control and the distillers. What why is it, why why do you think it's so big? That's a really big difference, and that, that carried over into dry matter digestibility. Yeah. However, uh, the what we think is it depends on the uh, the type of distillate grain. The distiller's grain that we used is high protein distiller's grain. So it's it's not typical distiller's grain. It was it has one more step to uh, produce that distiller's grain to have more protein. So probably I think uh, during that process we think digestibility of uh, distiller's grain was uh, probably a uh, lower uh, or uh, less uh, compared to typical distiller's grain. Typical distillate grain has less digestibility as well, but not that much. What what was the, the I forgot that this was high protein distillers. Do you remember the protein concentration of this this product? Uh, it was almost the same as the soybean meal. Oh, so, so real, really high. Okay. Or something like that, if I remember correctly. Okay, I didn't. I was thinking in the 30s, so it's substantially higher. Yeah, 30 is for the typical probably distillate grain, but it was much higher than that. So do you think with the, the lower digestibility, lower milk, that 20% is you, you, you need to go less than 20% with this product, with this high, dis, high protein distillers? So when I talk about it, um, I always try to be careful because this is grain has all different. Um, but there is conventional uh, traditional distillers grain and reduced the fat uh, distillers grain. This is different from that. Uh, if you use the conventional or uh, traditional or reduced fat distillers grain, 10% might be the maximum to avoid any negative effect on uh, production. Um, if you go above that, maybe you don't see any negative effect, but maybe you see negative effects, so you don't want to take that risk. Um, however, um, if you want to use uh, different types of distillers grains, high protein distillers grain or something new, then you need more study to uh, figure it out. At a sale, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M. Visit MilkPay.com to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids and to learn how Smart Amine M is the product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, component levels, and the lifetime performance of their herds. And then lastly here, you, you did measure ammonia emissions, uh, with, specifically with the DCAD uh, treatment. What, what did you find on uh, ammonia emission uh, from manure? Um, so as I mentioned, uh, if you increase distilled grain uh, in the diet, then because of sulfur, high sulfur concentration of distilled grain, your DCAT, diet, diet DCAT is, is low. If your DCAT is low, then because it, it has an unbalanced uh, uh, in blood and uh, your urine pH goes down. So if you feed low DCAT diet, your urine pH is low. Then because of low urine pH, um, your ammonia uh, emission from manure might be decreased. So that's what we observed with this first grain diet treatment. But when you increase decad of the distressed grain diet, uh, because it's, it's balanced by increasing decad, we didn't see any uh, decreased ammonia emission from uh, manure for that treatment. Okay. So it fits your, fits your theory then. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has uh, been informative. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you very much for the invitation.